Like many people, I was pretty excited when Bamboo Labs came out with H2D. I didn't really care about the, the, the bigger size. It's come in slightly useful. Uh, the heater chamber was also a great improvement. Uh, but what I really wanted the dual nozzle for was what I think most people went in with for uh, dual nozzles. If you were from, coming from an engineering side, it turns out filament development has, has really kind of kept going for your primary materials. Support materials, because so many things didn't have dual nozzles or couldn't switch, and even and switching like a lot of these, it, it's, it's bad times. Switching types of materials during a print is bad times. So I've really been, you know, I've been moving to a lot of nylon as engineering filaments. Uh, there's a reason why I've been moving to nylons. They're really, really durable. I mean, like impact durable. Um, and, and, and this shouldn't come as any surprise. All of your hobby grade RC cars, mostly nylon. Uh, your Milwaukee and DeWalt and Hilti tools, reinforced nylon and often glass fiber reinforced nylon. Um, you know, almost anything you want that's really durable, it's also really low friction, so it's often used in gears. And so, like, it's really, really cool. I mean, this was my impetus to, like, if I can't, can't use support materials like I thought I could in the H2D, well, that kind of led me to, all right, well, maybe we can look at other uses. And I, I thought one of the, the use cases that, are, you know, brilliant, I think hundreds, maybe a thousand or two people saw my whole video on the idea of like, oh, if we're getting carbon fibers embedded in us from handling parts um, by printing with carbon fiber, let's encase it in the non-carbon fiber version. Well, it works in theory. It's great. It takes a little more work. Um, but the real problem with that, at least I found, was that it wasn't that innovative because I couldn't get any carbon fiber embedded in my hands and I kept trying. So I was like, ah, oh, well, that kind of sucks. So like, I think it has its uses, like, you know, having a, a glass fiber, carbon fiber core, and then, and then uh, a non-reinforced uh, non exterior so you can have increased flexibility, but still have that stronger material. Um, you know, this, this has a whole bunch of, of potential uses. Worked really well. 0.2 millimeter nozzle, uh, amazing detail. Uh, you, you have to get used to some of the different shrinkage rates and, and stuff like that. But then I thought, what if I could combine it? What if it was something relatively large and I could have super fine detail? So my, my big example has always been gears and we will come back to using uh, the gear example. But with a 0.4 millimeter nozzle, it's really hard to get below a 0.8 millimeter moduli. Modulus, well, whatever it is. And so if you want to go a little bit smaller than that, you need to go down to a 0.3 or 0.2. Well, you can't use reinforced nylons or reinforce anything in, in that size. Uh, they'll, they tend to jam up. You can try it, but mm, it's eh, bad news. If we combined like, all right, core reinforcement like I was doing, but high detail, now we can get down to a 0.4 point, probably a 0.4 modulus gear. That'd be interesting, especially if I want to make some tiny little gearboxes. I decided, you know, this is great. I'm just going, I already bought all these spare nozzles. Let's take the point to put it in. I told it, it changed that I changed nozzles. So it went and it looked at them and it was like, yep. And then I went into the slicer and it said, no, sir, you cannot print with two different size nozzles. You must select one and it will be your master. Hmm, this is odd. I know that, you know, even though I've seen in forums people say that you can't do it, you can, like when I was doing my um, gears for with the two different materials, with the same size nozzle before, I did find that I could do all sorts of stuff with uh, layers. So for instance, I could have a, I could, they could still both be like say 0.16, but I would start one at 0.16 for the initial layer and the other at 0.24. And so now there's 0.8, so, so they kind of like lock step, so, so they interlock. Honestly, like, it was just something I tested, but the slicer is infinitely capable of it. There is zero problem. Um, and in fact, you can make one significantly, like even if, if you made one 0.8, 1.24, you have to get three layers of that one. It'll just do the three layers and then do, do the next one. one, and then it'll do the, the next one, and then do the three layers again. It's like. The slicer is already capable. So it seemed weird that 
different people are saying that the slicer is not capable of doing different layer lengths, or I should say layer widths, trace widths, filament widths, extrusion widths. Okay, something. Because the, the arachne, the arachna, the slicer does variable line widths. So uh, something sm smelled fishy here. But I had heard, I heard that other slicers could do it. Like I think pressure slicer with their uh, head changer can do it. Like I'm pretty sure it's there. I'm pretty sure it's capable. The real problem is the slicer thinks it's the wrong thing. But I can change line width. And sure enough, I went in and I checked and I could set up, doesn't matter what nozzle said, I could set line width to almost anything I wanted. Well, if I know the line width and I know the layer thickness, material metering or how much the extruder, extruder is going to actually push, that volume is likely based on the extruded volume. If, the, if I know the height and the width, then what the heck does the nozzle matter? Now, there may be something in the code deep down limiting nozzles or, or, or that might be why there's multiple, uh, you have to have multiple filament profiles for each nozzle. Like it's a bit weird, but I mean, if your heater can keep up and you can set your, your maximum flow in volumetrically to slow it down, let's put in the 2.2 nozzle again. So that's what I did, but I needed it to think it's a 0.4 and it's going to do a read. Now, I don't know if you just stick it in, if it'll automatically read, because I stupidly hit read nozzle, but I made my own. I didn't even go and find any special. I used the PVP I used to, to stick the nylon down, just cut it out, I'll put it on the back, stuck it on, it came off because it was stuck on my finger, had a bend in it, didn't care about it, it's still read as a 0.4. Went into the Slicer software, and I'm using the same gear uh, that we used in the last video. But now I can set the line width really small. And guess what? Looks exactly like how a slicer would do it with a 0.2 millimeter nozzle. And so I, I very excitedly sent to printer. Um, now I, I made the, the layers the same height and, a, and what would be appropriate for a 0.2, which is usually about half your, your nozzle diameter to be your layer thickness, which means 0.1 millimeter layers. Um, I think that's, uh, that's a good starting point and that's, that's where I started and it made a prime tower and it wasted a lot more filament on that prime tower, but the gear came out really well. And that just led to some more experiments. Uh, you can do differential layer heights. You can do different widths. You can do anything you want. But if you do different layer heights, it'll get angry about the prime tower. That's not a huge deal though. You can turn off the prime tower. Then things got a little worse. So then I just made some cylinders to kind of waste filament and kept doing it in the right order. It would do those first and then do my conjoined one. And that just might be luck of the draw. And I did a bit more of that and refined it. I also ha did variable like initial steps different and stuff like that. But um, when you do conjoined, like the there's w only one line width for that initial. And so it kind of makes your first one a bit goopy. It's kind of like it's over extruding with a nozzle that's too small, but it's only for one layer and for your adhesion layer. And so it's not usually that bad because you want it smushed down anyway. So yeah, that's all you have to do is print out a fake QR code, stick it on it, and just don't screw up. Don't screw up. That's definitely the really important part of this. Don't don't screw screw up. You'll probably screw up. You'll probably forget to edit these. You'll probably forget something, but just don't do that. Don't don't screw up. Honestly, I don't know why we haven't had this update. There was stuff in their form a, over a year ago on this. So I, th I think this kind of highlights that really the slicer's capable, the printer's capable. You can do different layer heights. You can do interlocking uh, layers with different materials. You can do different line widths and, and put in different nozzles, so long as you have a two-dimensional printer and a glue stick. Um, and, and don't forget to edit all your line widths on the right nozzle. This, this is important. I feel like the H2C coming out right now feels like my h2d is put out to pasture a little early 
I think there isn't sufficient support materials out there, which was kind of the primary use case of, of the dual, at least at, from an engineering perspective. I don't care what color a lot of things are. I mean, if I have black and I have gray, I'm generally pretty happy. Um, what I'd like to see is it continue on a little bit, at least from software development. The, the H2C is basically an H2D with smaller bed, bed and a quick change patent avoid nozzle thing, I think. We don't really need to see much, but I think there is still a lot of expectations for the dual nozzle that have not been met. With that, I hope you learned something. And honestly, I really hope people give this a try. I'd love to find out um, where I'm wrong. There's That nozzle definition has got to mean something. I just can't seem to find it. <laughs>